Okay, again, in this video series, we are looking at the uh, Google Capture Flag for 2018. Uh, again, shout outs to Live Overflow and uh, John Hammond, because they're the ones that brought this to my attention. Not, they didn't actually contact me, bring it to my attention. I just watched their videos and uh, liked it and thought I'd go through this. Um, and today we're going to be looking at this one right here. OCR is cool. Uh, again, I've made a script that automates through this. Uh, if you go to my GitLab page, gitlab.com forward slash mailx1000 forward slash capital CTF, uh, you can download that and look at my scripts which automate it and give you the flag and then you can walk through those and see how I did it. And uh, before I did this one, I actually watched uh, John uh, Hammond's uh, video on it and uh, he did good, but I, I, I went a different route uh, just to be different. Uh, and I'll show you why, because here it even gives you a hint. Again, if you read the story here, Caesar once said, don't stab me. Uh, and this is going to be a reference to what you need to do to solve the, um, the, 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 the code. Uh, if you don't know what a Caesar cipher is, a Caesar cipher is uh, basically when you letter shift codes. So uh, if I write you a message, I shift all the letters by a certain number. So if I... Um, go, you know, A, if I say shift by three, it would be B, C, D. So anytime there's a D in my letter, it's supposed to be an A and so forth and so on. And uh, there's actually a program, uh, part of uh, the package on uh, Linux systems uh, called BSD Games. And once you install that package, there's a program called Caesar, which will shift letters for you, which is how uh, John... Hammond did it, and I was like, or I'm sorry, yeah, Hammond, Hammond, and um, which was awesome. I'm glad to know about this program, but I didn't want to make like a video that's the same as his video. Uh, plus, uh, I wanted to, although we are going to be using some OCR tools and other things that aren't installed on the default system, I wanted to try to see if I could do the cipher shift, the, the Caesar shift. Um, without installing, without using that program, using tools that are built into uh, pretty much every Linux distribution. So I Googled it, you know, shifting letters over, and I found and added to my script, instead of using the Caesar program, I just used TR, which is for replacing programs, and it uses uh, printf, and then it shifts, and we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, but I just did that to be different <laughs> uh, uh, than him and, and make it one less package for people running my script need. So let's go ahead and switch over to the shell here. And I'm going to move into the OCR folder from my GitLab project. And in here, uh, let me go ahead and run my script. There's already some files there. I don't know if I made the script clean things up, but you run it. One second, please. Right now, it's resi it downloads the image, resizes the image, runs OCR in it, makes a few corrections on my uh, my my uh, manually, and then it gives you that. That's why it takes a second, and I gave it the message, so please, uh, one second, please. So let's go ahead and look at my code. So again, as it, yeah, got to give it fast H. Ah, so I'm going to use Tesseract to decode the image. So when you write down my, my script at the beginning, removes any PNGs and just dumps any error output to those. You know. So if you don't have Tesseract installed, my, uh, my script will say, you check it and say, you have to please install it. And then it says, you'll probably want to, you know, aptitude if you're on a system that runs aptitude, uh, Tesseract-OCR to install it, and then it exits one, meaning that it failed to run because you need that installed. Anyway, after that, uh, we make sure that we clear out any PNGs that exist, and then we download the zip file and unzip it from the website. And then we say, one second please, because again, everything else here runs a little slow. Uh, Image Magic also needs to be installed and may not be by default, but is on a lot of systems. And here I did something a little different than John uh, Hammond. Um, he scaled it to 300. He took the image and scaled it up to see if he got better results. And uh, he got close results, but he still had to manually change a number of the characters. Um, but, but real quick, let's look at display um, OCR. So this is the... Um, the image you get, 
And if you just you look at it, you can see it's just a jumble of letters. And it's an image, so we have to either manually type this stuff out or use OCR to uh, convert it to, to text. And then we can run our script on it. But looking through this, it's kind of obvious. Again, this is a beginner's uh, um, capture the flag. All the, the, the flags start with CTF and then have a code inside uh, curly braces. Well, right here you can see uh, VMY, curly braces, some letters, curly braces. So right away we know that this is our code and we already know that it's a, C, uh, a Caesar cipher. So here I can go, okay, V, uh, um, uh, now I need to do the alphabet, <laughs> uh, V, Q, R, S, T, U, Z, uh, T, <laughs> um, X, Y, Z, uh, where am I? S, V, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Okay, so just counting on my fingers from there, from V, wrapping around to C is seven. So we already know that our Caesar cipher is a shift of seven. I mean, so at this point you can do it by hand. Um, but of course we don't want to do that. We want to make it because, because again, if I was to do uh, M, I could go N O P Q R S T. Oh, that's our second letter, C T, and then the next letter should be F. So Y, X Y Z, A B C D E F. Yeah, so it's a seven shift cipher. So you could you could just manually write this down. Not that hard. But we're going to try to automate it as much as possible here. Um, but that's our code right there. And that's all we really care about is just ciphering these words right here. Okay? Um, so looking back at my code here, I'm using Image Magic to scale it up double the size, double the resolution. And I tried a bunch of different resolutions for this image and I found that 200 did a pretty good job. And I also went to the Tesseract website and searched for best size. And they said that Tesseract works best if you have a uh, DPI of um, 300. So I changed the density to 300. I don't know how these two, you know, affect each other when you're running the one code like this, but I ran that and then I output it to the same file and then I dump the output of that, of Tesseract, into a variable called txt. <clears throat> and I was very, very close. There were two characters that I just could not get to completely convert. But here, uh, what I do is, even though I know it's a seven, uh, sh uh, seven shift cipher, or whatever you want to call it, I'm shifting seven, seven letters, I wanted to... Um, uh, cycle through all of them, uh, which is what John Hammond did on his website, but I, again, did different. Uh, he used a loop and he used the Caesar program. Here I'm looping, I'm using a sequence to 25. Now, another thing, and I'm just picking on, on John Hammond at this point, he actually, in his video, uh, used Caesar and he cycled from 0 to 26 because there's 26 letters, but really, he only needed to cycle from 1 to 25 because uh, a 0 shift gives you nothing, and if he went all the way to 26, he's back at the beginning again. So really, he did two cycles that he didn't need to. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. I'm just giving him a hard time about that. Um, but no, so here I am saying, you know, sequence 25, so I'm shifting it 1 through 25 here, and I'm echoing that number and text, our text that we grabbed from Tesseract, uh, and I am piping that into TR, and then we're going to run a subcommand here of printf, and we're using that variable, so that's going to be our shift. We're shifting, and we're piping that into TR again, but then the original TR command uh, is taking all the capital uh, and lowercase letters and shifting them this number. I, I know it looks a little confusing, uh, and the Caesar program is a lot easier to understand, but again, I wanted to do it uh, trying to use a program that is built into every Linux system out there. Uh, so that's what I did after some Googling. I did not know how to do this originally. Uh, and then uh, if we look back at our, our, our original image, so when you're using an OCR program, optical character recognition, you're taking an image and you're trying to convert the characters in that image to actually actual text characters on your computer, 
different fonts. It's like you can program your OCR to work with different fonts, but here I'm just using the default, you know, Tesseract. And um, what I was realizing, well, one, I, you always get this. The letter O might come out as a number O, or a lowercase O might come out as a capital O, or the other way around. Same with P's. P's might be capital P's or lowercase P's. It's hard to tell. So you can usually clean that up by running it through some, like, uh, you know, uh, spell checks and stuff like that. If you're working with actual words, but we're working with a long string. There's words in there, but they're they're all jumbled together. Um, so I did notice that when I ran it through Tesseract, my code here, a lot of letters were uppercase. And if we, again...